was like, it's one of those things my wife's going to shoot me because I have absolutely no need for it. But, well, mine does too. She doesn't, I mean, she doesn't really get on to me for it. But. David Jeffries. See him? I'm going to head back upstairs. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Uh, welcome to GPSL. Good morning. Yeah. I uh, first uh, wanted to uh, think of some thought to how do I how do I welcome everybody came all the way down here to Texas to attend GPSL. And I know it's a long drive. But, uh, we got somebody from North Dakota here. All right, New York. All right, Mike. Um, and Phoenix, Arizona, Here's, here we are, Idaho. People came from a long way to attend GPSL 2016. I'm glad to see you all here. Um, give a lot of thought to how to say welcome. And I thought, you know what, I'm a, I'm a horse guy. I've got three horses at home and I, I've trained horses and I've been around horses all my life. I should come out here in a 10 gallon hat and a vest and spurs and say, Yeehaw! Welcome to Texas. <laughs> then I had this uh, this divine intervention. You know that overpowering your wife. voice. Your wife. Your wife. <laughs> you got it. It was my wife saying, uh, "No, <laughs> uh, a Yankee just does not do that very well." So uh, I'll just say, you're "Welcome to keep yourself." Uh, got a pretty uh, big program going on today, and. Uh, I'll tell you what, we uh, got to the point where you know I had people saying, hey, I'd like to give a presentation, and uh, we had a lot of presentation you know, material lined up, so a very tight, tight schedule. Um, got a little bit of a late start this morning for uh, technical difficulties, which tends to uh, plague all of us in ham radio, doesn't it? So I uh, want to give a big thank you to uh, quite a few people that helped me. We have uh, John Deneen, who uh, asked me, Michael, what can I do? And uh, I said, John, you know, I'm having a hard time getting the uh, door prices going. I've got all kinds of phone calls, but they're just not returning phone calls to me. I'm having a heck of a time. So uh, John, step, stand up. John Champion, the door <laughs> and, uh, and seconding his position was my wife Louise. What can I do? I'm on the road a, li a lot, and uh, what other places can I call? I said, well, John's kind of taking care of this and this and this. How about hitting these people over here? So uh, she was able to uh, lay in a few more things, and so she also uh, kept me in line. Uh, <laughs> she is a, a task master at times. Uh, Michael, I need those name badges now. You know? So uh, I know. Uh, I, I thank uh, my wife Louise for helping with the, also with the door prices and keeping me in line. Uh, we have Chuck Holtzman. <laughs> I was having a hard time uh, getting the uh, gas figured out. A uh, local vendor that I use religiously has been always been a good vendor to me. But uh, when I asked him for hydrogen, he came in at uh, almost three times the price of what you guys have been paying. And I said, man, why is the price so high? He says, Michael, we don't ever handle hydrogen. Is I don't think we've ever had a bottle of hydrogen in our store. And uh, so they had some inside issues that were causing some issues, but their inside uh, barriers were causing some price issues. And uh, Chuck Goldsmith was able to uh, land Prax Air to uh, give us uh, some gas at some reasonable prices and deliver it to my house, and then I'll bring it over to the field. We had uh, uh, just a, a lot of people helping. And I, I do appreciate it. Uh, guys uh, running the predictions uh, really helped out. I was able to uh, actually go visit the FAA. The, some of you went on a tour yesterday. I, I, myself, I think it's just a, a wonderful tour to go on to understand what the, the guys have to deal with across the USA. And I don't know if he told you about uh, any time during the peak time of the day, there's over 5,000 airplanes in the air that they're taking care of. And just about every day, uh, 
they all land very safely. So uh, I went over there and I said, hey, I want to launch a whole bunch of balloons in your airspace. <laughs> <laughs> and I had actually 15 people sitting around the table and all looking at me. And uh, so I explained to them, and we're part 101 rules and going through the whole thing. And, and I'd actually been kind of grooming them by talking with them through the uh, last several years about high balls and uh, airspace. And I uh, said, man, I've worked with you guys. And one of the guys I worked with was there. He said, hey, this is a great deal. You know, we can see them on anchor and stuff. By, and there's leaks there. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit of trouble taking the APRS map to what we use. But uh, for the most part, we can find out where that balloon is, X, Y, and Z. So uh, he, he's kind of my proponent among those 15 people. And within just a few minutes, the whole group kind of turned over and said, hey, let's do this. Even though you're going into the most busy airspace we have coming into the Dallas-Fort Worth area. In and out, we have four airways above us. And if you guys fly, these are uh, called Victor Airways. And uh, all the traffic from the south part of the United States coming to Dallas-Fort Worth comes through our airspace right above the con plantation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, it couldn't be better. <laughs> and I said, well, the balloons really don't go straight up. They kind of go out to the side most of the time, but they might. And uh, I said, you know what? We'll deal with it. A bunch of good guys there. I was very, very pleased with uh, the, the meeting and uh, having uh, built a proponent there. Uh, what am I thinking? I forgot to uh, my list. But, uh, again, welcome to the GPSL 2016. And, uh, I hope everybody has a, a great time and tomorrow a, a safe day. Ladies, if anybody wants to. Oh, yeah. Uh, Louise just reminded me that uh, some of the compadres uh, want to go downtown, and uh, I think if you kind of gather by the back door there, you can probably carpool downtown and, and uh, do things together. We have a wonderful square. I grew up in a tourist attraction in South Haven, Michigan. It was a tourist attraction of well, basically southwest uh, Michigan. It was a beautiful uh, harbor and lake there. And uh, ended up in Granbury, which is Texas's version of a, a tourist trap. <laughs> we have uh, water in our lake this year. Uh, <laughs> Lots of water. I don't know if you came through the front gate, but you look down and see how far the water is down. The water was coming up over the top of that bridge. Right. So uh, we had an uh, incredible amount of water. And uh, so when we go chasing tomorrow, make sure you have some boots because there's a lot of standing water. Uh, my place is basically on a sand alone. It drains. I've never had water in my yard. And now we just get a little sprinkle. I've got water in my yard. The, water, the ground is so saturated. So plan on water. It's going to be hot and humid. Our uh, heat index is probably going to be about 115 degrees. Welcome to Texas. Uh, prior to this week, we've been in the 70s. Yeah. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Here. Um, yeah. Emotional guy, sorry. Um, Notice that Doug Lockmiller's not here. Uh, Doug's uh, been one of my best friends uh, since I moved here in 2000. Uh, got together in ham radio. He's got uh, severe cancer in the brain. Uh, he's the one that started Arbonet. Uh, Doug would uh, joke about uh, he comes up with the crazy ideas and schemes, and Michael makes them happen. So uh, I'm not sure that was a compliment. But, uh, uh, anyways, uh, give your thoughts and prayers over to Doug. Uh, it's a very, very challenging situation that he's in right now, and uh, uh, it hurts. So uh, let's start out uh, with uh, Jerry, John, and Mark about uh, Flight synopsis. What's uh, what's our flight path looking like? Oh. 
Okay, Jerry's, Jerry's been running predictions and I've been running predictions and, uh, and I'd really like to thank from EOSS, uh, Randy Collender, who is kind of our main guy for all of the things we do with Edge of Space Sciences and uh, he posts everything up on the web and makes it all automatic and we just, we take it for granted that it's there in EOSS. So what I do is I just run a ham hub and it, it just always amazes me. If I get my numbers lined up with his, He's always right. So uh, <laughs> everything that I'm seeing, and, and we are we are doing it for a specific payload that EOSS is planned. So we've got our own ascent rate, our own descent rate, our own planned burst altitude. So we know that. So we run a single predict, and ours is basically coming in down around the town of Heiko, not Hiko, Heiko. <coughs> You've got to be very careful how you say things down here. If you call the town by the wrong name, you'll be escorted out, <laughs> and that's not necessarily a good thing. Jerry, on the other hand, has been doing multiple predicts, and so Jerry's been doing variable ascent rates, variable descent rates, variable burst altitudes. And uh, again, for EOSS, it, we're running about 1,100 feet per uh, minute up, and about uh, 10, 20 feet per minute down, and a burst of, well, I think it was 99,000, was kind of where Randy was running it. And Randy and Hab Hub are in absolute agreement, but if you go down uh, US 281 towards Heiko, uh, we're supposed to be just southwest of Heiko, and uh, something within five miles of that is what we are expecting. Uh, Jerry, you want to tell them what you've seen? That's what I'm so I don't know what I don't know what the area looks like that much since I'm not from here. But in honor of Keith, they're all landing around Ferry. <laughs> <laughs> so not quite sure where that is, but they're all. I've been running them, you, know, you guys have probably seen 60, 90, and 105 K burst, and 850 and 1100. I'm hoping that's kind of the envelope we'll all be in. And hopefully we'll all be relatively close to ferry. So are any of those places drier than others at this point, or is that all in the middle of the marsh now? The, this whole area of North Texas, from Waco all the way up to the Oklahoma border, was saturated for the last two months. We had, and, and last week, uh, we had a neighbor that was watching her rain gauge, and Eileen, she said one day, in two hours, we had four inches of rain. The next day, in two hours, we had two inches of rain. It was coming sideways. I couldn't see across the lake. We couldn't see anything out there. I felt like I was living in a car wash. So not only have we had a lot of saturated rain that was causing the flooding that they had here in Granbury, but every lake in North, North Texas is full. A year and a half ago, our lakes were bone dry. We were in severe drought. We were as bad as California. And that is all gone now to the point where we no longer have severe drought. We now have saturated ground where he sees standing water in his yard. So you're gonna expect very soft conditions out there. You get off um, and, you know, I, I had a little situation in Hutchinson that many of you remember where I slid off into a ditch and it's not any fun. And the thing is, the top of the road, when you turn onto that dirt road, it'll look dry. But underneath of it, there's goo. And that goo is about that thick. You see it in eastern Colorado, you see it all over the country, but be very careful. With 99 degree temperatures, the top of that is baking. And well, yeah, that's perfectly safe. We're gonna do fine. And you do that 90 degree turn and head down that road, and the next thing you know, you're off. So everybody have your toe straps, everybody have your boots, and everybody drive very carefully out there. Uh, the, the Texas law enforcement folks love to see people from out of state. You are revenue to them, so <laughs> obey the speed limits and be very careful. And uh, most of our farm to market roads are pretty good and they have pretty high posted speed limits. Some of them as high as 70 miles an hour on two lane roads in the country, and that's fine, but still be careful. And our roads don't run neatly east, west, north, south. I will tell you that to the southwest of here, which is where we're headed, are a lot fewer trees than you see here at the plantation. This is a very heavily treed area. We are hopefully not flying into this type of area. That area down around Heiko, very Surprise, is a, it's, it's a little bit more cultivated. There are more fields out there that will look a little friendlier to balloon flights. But we all know when we throw them up in the air, we have no idea what they're going to come down in. How many times have we found power lines in eastern Colorado? I mean, literally draped them over the top of them, and what are the odds? But it, one, one year it happened, what, three times in a year? Yeah, so anything can happen. And we have a lot of high power lines out here, too. Somebody asked about the floaters. It looks like they're still heading for Mexico, and then they'll head west out into the Pacific. Yep, I don't know why, but that's what they're showing. Different. 
Well, it, it's kind of it's kind of different that we're going to go southwest here. That's not a usual pattern for us. But this high pressure system has just locked in over top of us. So we don't expect any changes. Uh, this weather is just kind of part. So the predictions have been very stable for the last three days, and I don't expect that to change. Thanks, Michael. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate all the. Uh, Bill's got a question. Around. Yeah. What altitude? What altitude did you predict the floater flight? Twenty-six and twenty-nine. And uh, for you guys that are doing floaters, I do have a hydrogen, uh, sorry, helium tank in the back of my truck with the uh, loon fill uh, rubber tip on there. So uh, it's pretty much ready to go. I think the rubber gauge is actually over there, but uh, I have the tank with me so you guys can start filling today. All right, uh, first presentation, the EOSS.